Welcome back everybody, my name is Ultimar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Pillars of Eternity. Uh, where we left off last time, we had to run back to the keep, repair some things. Everything is all back in order, for the most part. We have our walls rebuilt, we have our merchant stalls rebuilt, everything is good to go. You may notice we do not have Palagina or Palagina in our group. She's actually away on a mission right now, so we don't want to recall her. We'll deal with her side quest a little bit later on. When she returns from her mission, which is on turn 45, I believe, or whatever, 75? I don't remember where we are exactly. But she will be returning at some point. Let's go see who's around. Tribesman, a gold person named Crows. And some statues, which are these? The Keepers of the Stone, the Guided Compass, the Fisher Crane, the Stone Bramble, the Twice Split Arrows, and the Three Tusk Stalgar, Stalgar, whatever they're called. Let's continue on inwards. So we are apparently just allowed to walk in right up to the leader of this place. That's interesting. Another Estramore. What do you want? A middle-aged Orlan woman stands at the back of the longhouse, an expression of irritation on her narrow features. As you approach, she takes a decisive step towards you. I'm looking for another who passed through the city. Few Estramoran are given the freedom of our sacred city. That you ask for this person is suspicious. There are reasons we don't let you Estramoran roam our sacred city. Reasons I am coming to understand. Has something happened recently? More than I care to think about. Looters have grown bolder at the sights of the builders. The people of Defiance Bay set fire to their own city. And every week, the Three Tusk Stelgar bring news of more desperate settlers pushing at our borders, trying to escape their plague of an old fame children. Suddenly, you feel the presence of someone else in the hall. The Anamanthath continue to glare at you, but something has stepped out of her skin. It reaches out to you. Permitting more strangers the freedom of the city is out of the question right now. Go and be thankful that Anamthath Shimak doesn't sit in the passage of the Six today. He would not be so kind as I. Ow, oh, that was loud. Fairwilt. A vision of an Orland man appears near Bethwill. She has, or he has the same green-brown fur and hazel eyes as she does. Help me reason with them, he points behind you. Turning, you see a ghostly, the ghostly shapes of five other Anamfatha. Another Orland with tawny fur and a scarred face, a frowning dwarf, a black-furred Orland, and two elves. You're angry about something. I hear it in your voice. What is it? Anamfath, Anamfath, Bethwill. Are the outrages I listed for you not enough? Trouble brews, and none of it is my choosing. The spectral Orlin takes another step from her, setting his foot down with a slow, heavy motion. Tendrils of essence strain between them, and he grimaces as he leans forward, as if struggling against a gale. The angry Anamanthath winces. War! The spectral Orlin's voice is a rasping croak. They're headed for war. Remind them of Fairwolt's warning. Does Fairwolt's warning mean anything to you? Fairwilt's soul image gasps, taut threads of essence tug at him, drawing him back into the Anamanfath. He looks at you up at you, sorry, he looks up at you again. I tried to tell them the builder's souls have touched even the Estramoran. You'd better explain yourself. The two attending tribesmen look from the Anamanfath to you, their swords or sword hands ready, her slitted pupils narrow. The builder's souls have touched even the Estramoran. Ow, why? There's no way you could have known this saying. Not unless you are a galoose on Anams, a watcher of souls. She gasps as the last of Fairwolf's soul fades back into her. The tribesmen gape at you. She takes another step towards you. Yes, I am a watcher. Actually, I'm going to say Fairwolf tries tried to warn the other tribes about something. What was it? Feralt's warning came before the Broken Stone War. Feralt, my ancestor on my mother's side, was Anamfath of our tribe then. When the Estramoric farmers defiled the builder's monuments, Feralt urged the other Anamfatha to patience. 
but louder, angrier voices prevail. She folds her clawed hands in front of her and gazes down at them. Feralt believed that the invaders could be taught to respect the builders as we do. He also believed the builders' souls had spread to all peoples, and that we should avoid needless conflict with others. More practically, he worried that a violent response would only spur further bloodshed across the generations, and you can see where we are today. What do you mean? While Feralt's words were shrewd, they were ignored back then. Simply remembering his warning now will not undo the wars and the changes that the years have seen. There is blood on these stones, and that is all anyone remembers now. An image of polished Adric cube, sorry, an image of a polished Adric cube flashes in your mind. There is writing on the sides, but the image is too faint for you to read it. The Animan Fath turns from you and looks at the ground, gnawing a pointed claw. So give them something else to remember. She looks at you sadly. I'm afraid I already have. Another Estramor came through here a few days ago and, well, letting him through was a mistake. One I am eager not to repeat. The Guided Compass tribe has a reputation for being too soft with Estramorin. One that will not be improved by my failure to stop this man who has desecrated our most sacred sites. Then now is the time to fix things. I won't repeat a mistake in my haste to correct it. We bar twin elms from Estramorin to protect the ancient places that the Builders left behind. The Builders left this heritage to us to defend, but they alone had access to it. On this much, at least the six tribes agree. She sighs. You, see, you again see the polished Adra cornerstone in your mind. This time the image is clearer. Each face of the stone is inscribed with a phrase you know by heart. You feel your lips form words. A gift from the Builders of Civilization to the Guardians of their legacy. May the guardians watch the door while the builders keep the key. These were the words given to the keepers of the stone. Bethwell stares at you, her tiny pointed teeth visible through her gaping mouth. I know. Very well. The city is yours to explore. Tell the guard at the gate that you come to see the cornerstone with the blessing of the guided compass. If the gods have truly returned one of the builders to us, Find the Delamgon of Ter Evron in Elm's Reach. If the gods have sent you here with a purpose, the Delamgon will know. Okay. In the meantime, I shall be here to assist you. I would like to know more about you. I am the Anamanfath of the Guided Compass. Like many Anamanfatha, Anamfatha, sorry, I have leadership in my blood. While tribal authority is not strictly hereditary, we believe that strong leaders can impart a portion of their soul on their children and grandchildren, meaning that the Anamanfatha may succeed from a single line for many generations. She worries a sharpened thumb claw. Of course, with all that's happened here today, I wondered whether my family's line is coming to an end with me. Something else you would like to know. What are the six tribes? Glenfaithen society is divided into tribes, which are further divided into clans. Each tribe is united by a particular history or way of life, and clans are communities of families that live together. In truth, there are more than six tribes, but the six largest have traditionally led the others. Each of the six has a seat here in the Passage of the Six, where we discuss matters of common interest. You saw, for instance, the debate that occurred before the Broken Stone War. She gives you a hesitant look. The six tribes are the Keepers of the Stone, Fisher Crane, Three Tusk Stale, or Stelgare, Stone Bramble, Toy Split Arrows, and of course the Guided Compass. Who are the Keepers of the Stone? They are the first and oldest of the tribes. When they first sailed to Irglen Fath, they met the builders who gave them the cornerstone and those words you quoted as a token of friendship. I'd like to hear about the Fisher Crane, a mostly Orland tribe from Thane Bog. Most of the sites they guard are half buried in the wetlands, and even the other tribes couldn't tell you where they are. She crosses her arms. They are not the most renowned of the tribes, but they are the cleverest and subtlest. Say what you will about the berserkers of the Three Test Stelgare. I'd rather face them than a Fisher Crane ambush squad any day. Tell me about the Three Test Stelgare. 
She laughs and shakes her head, same as everybody. They're fearless maniacs and they want everyone to know it. They're considered a wild bunch, even among Glenfathans. Most or many of their territories have seen the most conflict with the Esther Moran, and they don't forget it. They don't want anyone else to, either. They inflicted and bore some of the heaviest casualties in the wars with the Esther Moran. In fact, there was a rift within the Three Tests Delgair after the War of Black Trees. Dozens of clans broke away from the ravaged lands and retreated further into the Deerwood, joining whichever tribes would take them. Broken tusks, some called them. The majority of the tribe dug into the half-burned forest to hold the line, and many respect them for it. She frowns uneasily. They more than earned their place among the six, but they advocate more conflict than is wise, and too many others are quick to idol er, idolize them for their valor in battle. Tell me about the Stone Bramble. Mostly dwarves out of the White Marsh, they're one of the younger tribes formed over the years by trade routes between the wilds and the mountains. They see themselves as genuinely Glenfathen, though, and who can argue with them? Only Fisher Crane defends sites in such inhospitable territory. I am not familiar with the twice split arrows. Not many are. They're traditionally outcasts and exiles from other tribes, probably the least respected tribe of them all, but our ancestors believe they should have a voice, and so they've got a seat among the six. Most of the other tribes see them as scavengers and bottom feeders, but don't say that to a twice split arrow. They think themselves survivors, and they're as proud of their tribe as anybody else, she shrugs. They'll accept anyone, and I suppose there's virtue to that. You'll never know what you're getting into with them, though. Some clans will rob you blind, and others will slaughter a lamb for the honor of your visit. The Guided Compass is your tribe, right? Indeed, we're one of the younger tribes and not one of the most prestigious. We've tried to keep the peace with the Esther Moran, which has earned us the reputation of appeasers among some of our hardline brethren in the Three Tusks Delgare and the Keepers of the Stone. Alright. Good to know, that was very interesting. So, we can go hunt the assassin down. I'm kind of hoping to do Palagina's quest, but I guess not yet. We do have that one quest to do. Maybe we'll go do that. Where we have to warn that encampment about that incoming attack. I don't know what area that's in, though. Maybe it'll say in the quest log itself. Let's take a quick look. We have to find Aaron too. I don't know where that is. But we'll look into that. North Wailed Wilderness. Let's go see if we can get to there. I don't know where that is exactly, but maybe we can just go there right now. You're not using well. the right weapon. Um, North Wailed is actually north, north. Okay, so we're going to have to go there a different way. I guess we're going to have to go through Elm's Reach and then north, or Elm's Reach to Old Song to North Wild. Of course. Regardless, well, we're not going down that way just yes. yet. Hmm? Hmm? Everyone using the right weapon now. Nope. Following your lead. Your thoughts must flow deeply indeed. What is it? Alrighty. I guess we're going to the next area, although there are two houses. Several houses, actually. Let's go to see if we can loot some of them. Oops. Didn't mean to stop you there. There we go. Might as well see if there's any loot to be had. I wonder if I'll get in trouble for breaking and entering. Maybe. But maybe not. Who knows? Maybe they're a little more friendly than we give them credit for. We'll quick save before we go in, just in case. Hello? Light, flame, and sound. Awesome. Spread across the lumpy pallets of straw and hide blankets. Sorry, spread across the lumpy pallets of straw. The hide blankets are surprisingly soft. And the dried herbs crunch between your fingers, giving up a sweet floral aroma. I feel bad for looting this place, actually. Just people trying to get by. But we are the protagonist, and the protagonist always takes what they want, mostly. That's your... your privilege. I see you seeing me. Oh wait. The guard places his spear between you and the path that leads beyond the gate. Still, Esther Moore, 
The rest of the city is forbidden except by order of one of the Anamphatha. Trespassing in Twin Elms is punishable by death. I come to see the cornerstone with the blessing of the guided compass. The guard scowls and looks at his companion who nods back. He turns to you again, his knuckles whitening around the shaft of his spear. Always too cozy with the Esther Morin. Go then and mind your step around the sacred stones. Oh, they're not here to get us in trouble for looting the uh, house. Light. Oh, Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Builder's wisdom to you. Welcome to my home, Estramore. I am Lindsay, healer and guide. What brings you here? I like your songbird. Does it have a name? Well, he does, she blushes, but I ought to not let... Oh, but I ought not to have let my friend's daughters name him. The name is long and rather silly. The shorter version is Beaker. She rolls her eyes and smiles. The next bird I have will be named after it, Adam and Fath. Tell me about yourself. The locals have referred to me as a wise woman. A term of respect, I'm sure, but it makes me feel my years. I'm an herbalist and a healer. I spend most of my time caring for the ill, helping with the delivery of children, and making remedies for those in pain. And that's all she has to say, so... We're gonna leave her alone. We're certainly not gonna assassinate any Glenfaelin people in the middle of their city. That would just be silly. And... Psychotic, basically. There is one more Glenfaelin home to go into, and then we'll head off to the next area. Wait, are you people? No. Keeping an eye out. Oh, this one has a lock on it. Oh, it needs a key, like an actual key. Gotcha. Looks like we're not going in there. Maybe we can loot this. Yeah, they don't really care that we looted their lockpicks, so... Excellent. Um, we are going to go north, I guess, to Old Song, and then we're going to try and go to the North Whale place. One hour to get to Old Song. How big is the city? Must be quite a few hovels between me and Old Song, I guess. Although they are pretty cool looking hovels, we'll give them that. Hello, everybody. Thank you for welcoming me in this part of the city. Who's Urwa? Builder's wisdom to you. An Orlan woman stares at the sky with the with an air of deep contemplation. She occasionally puffs from a wooden pipe, blowing smoke into perfect rings. Who stands before me? She wipes her lips with the back of her hand. Her teeth, uneven and pointy, are stained red. I do not see Esther more and often. She picks the remains of an ochre root stuck in her gums, and believe me, I see many things. Perhaps you would want to see them too. She gestures behind her as an assortment, at an assortment of plants, roots, and files lighting up, or lying on the rug. What do you got? Do you have any dragon things? No, not really. All right. Well, that's worth a shot. What else is in this area? The Maw, Elm's Reach, Hylia's Shrine, Old Song's Pass. Noon Frost looks like a keep of some sort. Very Isle and Hearthsong. I wonder what's in Galloway's Maw. Actually, let's go around Old Song's Path. Let's just see if we can go north. Whoa! What was that? What? What is going on here? The stone is pitted with the marks of ancient chisels and furred with moss. We Hello. can't stay down here. Someone must go to the nest eventually. Two wood elves, a man and a woman, wear colorful robes embroidered with a matching emblem, a winged egg. Apart from their clothing, they couldn't be more different. She folds her arms and continually scowls at the broken walls around him. He, on the other hand, mutters prayers. His shade dappled face is tranquil as a cloudless sky. Just how are we supposed to worship the sky mother from among the weeds, hmm? This is a disgrace. The woman rounds on her companion. Calm yourself. We should be grateful that she protected us from the winged terror. Besides, even here we have a visitor. What's this winged terror you speak of? A dragon. 
One that has taken up residence in the Nest, the true temple of Helia, and slain many of her faithful. And one which Anuin has been in favor of killing from the beginning. But no, you advised caution. Now word spread that the dragon ate a few of our followers, and anyone willing to slay it wants an Anumfoth's ransom for the job. I told you, a larger party wouldn't stand a chance. By the time the first half reached the top of the mountain, the second half would still be stuck in the past. They'd be burned alive. Contrary to Anuin's suggestion, I am in favor of sending someone to kill the dragon. But I suggest a smaller party, and one willing to seek Helia's blessing. He gives us a curious look. I could go after this dragon. Someone of your ferocity could. What she means is that this is no mere drake, but a fully grown dragon. And one that has willingly moved into a populated area. You'll want every advantage at your disposal, including the blessing of the Sky Mother herself. I would suggest that you petition her directly at Ter Evra, if you haven't already. She points to a path on her right leading north and up a slope. You want to follow this path here, you'll pass through the North Weald, but the way up the mountain continues from there. It's near one of those big circles laid by the builders. I guess she should get started then. We're gonna die horribly. It's a dragon. Will this pass take us to the North Weald? Yes, it will. Excellent, now we can go to this quest, hopefully get Palagina, finish that quest, and then we will properly explore things and possibly go kill a dragon at some point. I am a little bit concerned about fighting a dragon. We can't even kill ogres, and I'm pretty sure a dragon can kill ogres. Okay, we're gonna go find this camp now. Oh, those are wolves. And I'm gonna move you back. If it makes you rest easy. Wolves aren't too hard to kill. Oh, Pelagin is back now. Finally. Excellent. What is it? We will go get her after we do this quest. I cannot keep up this pace. Arrows crude and fleshed with bright feathers protrude from the corpse. We have to track them to the east. Is it lootable? No. Hello. I see beetles. Hello. How is our minor fatigue? Okay, minor fatigue is not a big deal. When I was building the uh rebuilding the walls to the castle. I ended up just wandering back and forth like for eight days across the entire continent that we could get, you know, get access. See what I, can find. I actually got to extreme fatigue, which is like, my character was down to like 60 life, or 60 endurance I should say. I wonder if this is going to be an okay fight. They're just beetles. I guess we don't have a choice now. Okay, fight, fight that one. You three fight that one. These guys can tank pretty much forever, whereas the priest might die. I like the kitty cat just like wandering through the battle. No big deal. It ain't no thing. Die. Oh, actually worked out fairly well. They both died at the same time. As you wish. Alright, let's quick save. Because we should quick save after every fight that goes well. Because the next one might not. A bear. Oh, a lot of bears. Kill the elder bears. bear, but I don't think it's going to survive. We've been killing bears since the beginning of the game. Quick save though, just in case. I'll take care of it. 
I know we're supposed to go east, but I'm just gonna look around. And then dragon. Oh, god damn it. This is going to be a more complicated fight. No, you fight that. I think we're gonna need some actual spells. Beetle also can't get to us from its current location. You're not long. you're not in this fight anymore. Get back before you die. Stupid priest. Alright. Stone Beetle's dead. Now we can kill the End Dragon. Not you. You're not in this fight. Come on, go down. It's almost dead. Just kill it. It's so close. There we go. Edric, damn it. It actually got a stupid charm off before the end. What is it? That's okay, my main character can tank a dare. Maybe. Probably. Oh good, he's back to normal. Hey. What is it? Excellent. That didn't go too terribly. Let's quick save and head over of and see course. what they were. Another Edger Beetle, that figures. There are some actual ruins here. Oh, shut up, you're fine. Let's quick save. Before going into here. Or at least seeing what it is. A winding stair hugs the cliffside, providing an impressive view as you work your way higher and higher. Not too far along the path, however, you find your progress interrupted. A large boulder appears to have fallen from somewhere up above, and it now sits squarely in your way. I push it out of the way. Who will clear it? Adair. Adair heaves at the boulder, and after a few difficult moments, it starts sliding and rolling haltingly across the cracked steps, then plunges over the side and away. You hear the echoing clatter of rocks tumbling down the side of the cliff. A sound seems to stir something overhead. A shadow crosses the path, quick as lightning, and vanishes before you can catch a glimpse of what has cast it. But you do see the rapidly growing silhouettes of several more rocks flung down at you from above. Scrambling to action, the party ducks under a small rocky protrusion along the cliff base, but can assembles and is left just sort of shelter. A sudden hailstorm of fist-sized rocks and scattered debris rains down on them. Battered and bruised, kind of leaps the final distance to safety. After a short while, the thundering rumble of stones fades away. Your ordeal passed, you climb you continue your climb, and the rest of the journey proceeds without incident. At last you reach you find yourself at the base of the final twisting set of steps, above which you can see the towering pillars of Hylia's nest. Damn it, Kana, you suck at not getting hit by things. You're literally the only person that gets in trouble in these situations. Every time. I'm going to actually go back down because we weren't quite done with that other area. We needed to find that group. Although it's good to know that we uh, have access to the dragon right away if we want to go die horribly. If we feel like committing suicide, that is the way to go. Quick save. Actually, we're at half an hour. I'm going to end the video here. In the next video, we'll continue through this area and finish that quest. So, like... Oh, what do we have here? 
She did the quest, we lost some stuff to bandits, but gained a bunch, nothing new to report. Alright. And we have a new major quest. So we're going to assign a different character, we'll assign a ranger to it. Like always, if you guys have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.